Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. Man, I am so excited. We are so close to uh, the game our Dallas Cowboys are in Cleveland right now, probably in meetings, getting ready to play the Cleveland Browns in the season opener. So we have some news. We have um, an interview with Troy Aikman and Dak Prescott. I'm going to get to that in just a second. But I want to say, for those out there, Mike Tenenbaum especially, who say that the Dak Prescott should just walk and that there's better odds that Sazur Sanders is with the Dallas Cowboys than Dak Prescott. I want to let you guys know that right now they are down 28 to nothing against Nebraska. And this is a play of Sador. Let's watch this play. Seven yards deep. Let's it go to the sideline. Big six. Tommy Hill, the short run to the house. Okay. Back to business. So, back to business is right. So, that was not good. Uh, we're having a rough game. So, yeah, maybe the Cowboys could draft him and maybe not need to have a high draft pick. But, again, it's only the second game of the season. So, We'll have to wait and see how that goes. But letting you know, believe it or not, people have bad games. And so this is uh, one of the Dallas Cowboys greats interviewing one Rain Dakota Prescott. And I am going to enjoy this thoroughly as we sit here and we wait to see if the Cowboys get a contract and stuff done. Yesterday, Jerry Jones didn't want to talk about the contract. He said he wasn't going to talk about it at all. Some people have taken that as in the door has been slammed on getting a contract done. We've heard actually different things from other people that say um, that they're trying to get it done, that they're close. But let's watch this and then we'll comment on it. Year nine. That's uh, how crazy is that? It's flown by. It's definitely crazy from being the young rookie in the locker room to being the uncle or the old head, as they say. Is, uh, the it's a blessing. Old head. It's fun. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, shoot, I remember when you came in as a fourth round pick out of Mississippi State. Yeah. No one expected you to play right away, and, <laughs> and off you were. Um, I know you look forward to the start of every season, but does this one, does this one feel different in any way? Yeah, I mean, because it's the one that I'm in right now, I'm present. Um, I feel the best that I have, and I think if anything goes into the biggest factor that goes into it is the experience that I've had. So as you say, going into year nine, but I'm as smart as I've ever been. Um, as I said, the experience of just seeing the defense, getting to the plays I want to get to. Is at an all-time high? We're in year two of Mike running the offense. Um, brought in Zim, done a great job with the defense during training camp. It was a chess match every single day. Uh, so tons of tons of excitement going into this year, and looking forward to the best one yet. You were uh, league runner-up MVP last mm -hmm. year. Great season. Everyone thought it was a foregone conclusion that you would have a new contract coming into this season. That didn't happen. How does that make you feel? Uh, just reminds me that this is a business, and I don't take anything personal, to be mm -hmm. honest with you. Um, I control what I can, and that's being the best that I can on that field. And um, leaving it up to, to my agent and, and to the Jones and, and getting the deal done. Um, obviously, I've played a part in it and a lot of great communications, but for me, it's about taking care of my job and my part in it, and it's showing up every day, being the best version of myself and continuing to improve to make sure that, that I'm worth every dollar of it. Does it make you mad? No, it doesn't make me mad. Not at all. Uh, <laughs> <Okay>. No, <laughs> can't say. Um, I, you know, I, I, from my experience, you know, Jerry, uh, you know, he has a unique relationship with his quarterbacks. For sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's your relationship? Apparently not with Dak. Uh, it's a good relationship. Um, always growing, I can say that. I uh, understand that Jerry's going to be Jerry. Um, he's been very successful in what he does and in his business. Um, and in there is going to make going to be comments. And that's why I says I don't take anything personal. I understand that he does make some comments sometimes that could easily make me mad. Uh, but I understand the, the, the meaning and purpose behind it, I guess, and his 
um, Mad Scientist way. Uh, <laughs> more people get to look at our brand and yeah, get to look at us, right. um, which been, at the end of the day benefits all of us. So uh, my job is just to play on the field and ignore all the rest of the noise. Speaking of, uh, of Jerry speak, you know, early in the offseason, he made the comment that, that he was all in. Yeah. And I think a lot of people thought that meant all in on free agency and bringing in some key players mm -hmm. to make one last run at it. That didn't happen. Uh, what do you have you talked to him about that? What do you think he meant by all in? I don't know what he particularly meant by all in, um, but I think if you do look at our roster, uh, there's a lot of young guys that have been on the brink and are waiting for that role. And I think this is the year, if any other year, um, that these guys are going to take that step. And I mean, some second year guys, even third year guys who uh, maybe had battled injury earlier or just some things didn't go their way. They had an older guy above them, where at this point, um, they would be better than any signing we could get outside of the building. So uh, credit for him and trust in the roster, trust in uh, the players in that locker room and um, understanding that, that we're all in and we're all in every single day that we come in here uh, and that's in the locker room. So I don't know exactly what he meant. Yeah, you like this team. Love this team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I've always admired about you is you from day one as a starter have said that the standard here in Dallas is Super Bowls. And you all have won as many games as virtually anyone in the game here over the last several years. It, it hasn't translated to success in the postseason. Uh, why is that, do you think? And, and what do you feel is needed in order to get this team over the hump? If I had that answer, we would have had a lot more success than we've had. So um, can't, can't necessarily give you that other than we've just got to continue to build and understand that the regular season success doesn't automatically mean postseason success. That when you get into those playoffs, you get into that tournament, it's about flipping the switch and understanding that every single play is the utmost important play. And you have to give it your all from the, the show team guys at practice to the third down in a game. Mm -hmm. And all of those details matter. And so we just got to be better at the end of the year and being detailed and understanding, not, not getting um, overwhelmed with the emotion and, and, and the, the pressure on each play, but embracing it, embracing that, that we're in the what we're, this is the reason we play the game, is, is for this excitement, for this intensity, and just to understand mm -hmm. that each and every play, if we give it each and all, or each of us give it our very best detailed, that, that we'll get over the hump. How devastating was, uh, after everything seemed to be right out in front of you last year, how devastating was the Green Bay loss in the playoffs? Yeah, it was for, I mean, many reasons. Is expecting to win, um, the success we've had at home over the last two years, uh, to then obviously just the way that we started the game, me personally, to um, not being able to really stop the guys. And then um, as things got it going, thinking that maybe we have a chance, and, and it just got away from us. And uh, very devastating, but at the end of the day, We've got the opportunity to turn the page, put that behind us, um, and allow that to not necessarily be a scar, but but allow that that pain to, to fuel you each and every day and your, your motivation or inspire you just to continue to get better in your details. And everybody look in the mirror, not just myself, and say, where could I have done better? Where could I have helped this team? And I know that we've done that, and if we continue to do that, we'll be fine. You're in the mm -hmm. top three in Cowboys history and passing categories, uh, <laughs> all the major ones. Your eight years, you've been phenomenal. With that said, what what are you most proud of of your time here in Dallas and what you've accomplished? Mm. I'm not a guy that just you know sits back too much and think about what I've done. Uh, I guess I'm most proud that that I'm year nine still playing the game that I love at its highest level. Um, the best that that I feel like I've ever been is right now, and knowing that still I've got so much greatness ahead of me. Um, but but with all those numbers. I want to be at the top of the wins and, and right there with you at the Super Bowl. So uh, whether it's the passing yards, the touchdowns, I, I couldn't tell you those numbers or honestly where I even rank on them. So uh, that's not what keeps me up or keeps me motivated. It's getting this place here at Super Bowl. Yeah. Getting your draft classmate, Zeke, back this year. I know you guys are really close. Uh, we're close from the time you came into the yeah. league together. And uh, you know what's what's it been like having him back, and what have you seen from him, and and how he's going to be able to contribute this year? Yeah, I mean he's a great player. Um, obviously a great great friend, as you said. I mean we grew up here in Dallas together for the first seven years. Um, obviously before he left, but then just to have him back, understanding that's a guy that takes his job serious. He knows how to have fun, but when it's time to lock in, um, he's the best at flipping the switch, locking in. Uh, one of the smartest players that I've been around and I think that's evident every day, whether he's signaling like the quarterback signals or telling you how the line should block or some situation in two minutes that, that 
Um, he is always locked in to, to, to the game of football, um, what it matters the most. And mm -hmm. uh, we obviously know what kind of running back he is, so I think he's a great goal line threat. He's huge in the passing game for us, and he's just uh, influential to the team and just the way to, to approach the day. He's the, he's the guy, it sounds like, he brings the levity to this group, and you know you can't have enough of those guys. Was he missed last year? Yeah, he was definitely missed last year. Um, mm -hmm. as, as I just said, one, his charisma, his, his intensity. Obviously, we didn't have a lot of success down there in the goal line, and just being able to got, have a guy like that who over the last few years has been the best at, at getting in, um, whether it's a yard, two yards, or a little bit more um, out, is I think he'll, he'll be very valuable in that standpoint, too. There you have it, good people. All right, now so I know why they say so we'll see if they go ahead and get this thing done. Um, I don't know if they do or don't, but I can guarantee you one thing. I would say that the Cowboys records touchdown. I think uh, Dak would need 41 or is it 44 to get the all time record and 4,700 yards would get the yardage record. Um, We'll see how this goes. We've got tonight. They might be burning the midnight oil. We just don't know. They could be tomorrow morning. We hear about Dak Prescott is signed to an extension, and uh, we'll go from there. I'm Mark Holmes, and as always, I appreciate you guys. Back to work, getting this place ready for tomorrow. And, man, okay, we made a change because I took – I had a 65-inch TV outside in the outdoor studio – and I had a 55 that was in, that I brought in here from outside as well. But um, I put the 65 in here because having that 65 with the four screens on here, man, it is nice. And I'm watching, Col man, Colorado. Sador Sanders. Hmm. Not looking good right now. We are in the third quarter is just about over. And right now, it is a goose egg. So, we'll see. Hold on. Let's let's see. Third quarter is almost over. They're actually in the red zone right now. Third and goal. Sador. Almost sacked. Running, running, running. Buying time. Throws across his body and almost intercepted. There you have it, good people. I'm Mark Holmes, and I appreciate you. Peace out.